Hey guys, welcome to the Grocket Guitar Channel. That was a bunch of upper structures which I would like to teach you today. Please like and subscribe. I'm gonna uh, help you get into these things which I really, really love. They're beautiful uh, ways of looking at harmony. Really inspired me from a pretty young age. They were like very, very useful. So uh, the general idea is that you have uh, a structure, for example, just a chord like this, but instead of using it as a C major chord, C, G, you're thinking of it as uh, a structure that exists in other chords, maybe um, A flat, major seven, maybe to D minor seven. So what you're doing is basically uh, repurposing the chord and using it in cool ways. So let me get started with this. And uh, first of all, a definition of upper structure for now, a working simple definition is any chord that uh, is created inside a chord without using the root. For example, C major seven can be rewritten as E minor with a bass of C. With the bass, sounds like C major seven, of course. Okay, so an upper structure is just that uh, thing that forms when you remove the bass, and you can do it in multiple ways. So now let me give you a first exercise to get into it. This goes like this. I'm just having a G as a bass note, and I'll have chromatic major triads ascending by a half step. And once my hand gets way too stretchy, like a B over G, I'll change inversion. Okay, so learn this one. This is a very mechanical exercise, but it's gonna help you. Chromatic triads with a bass of G. You can do it in any set of strings, it's a cool thing. And you can do the same with an upper pedal note. So upper G, moving triads. Sounds like this. Okay, so that's just a very mechanical exercise just to get my brain in the mode of seeing this, the structure separated from another note either in the bass or on my top string. Here comes a trickier part, thinking about the meaning. So imagine, and I actually did this with a chart, you write down what each upper structure uh, can be in terms of function. Let me give you an example. We'll start with something pretty easy to see. Here's a D, and the bass note is C. And if I would like to wonder how I can use a major triad of tonic uh, on a whole step above the root, I can say D over C gives me the numbers 9, sharp 11, and 13. And think of it as an uh, exclusionary process, meaning you're looking for reasons why a chord can't be a thing. For example, D over C uh, will probably not work on a minor chord because you're not allowed to have the flat 5 next to the 5 on a minor chord. So you know that's not going to work. It's not allowed on uh, half diminished because you're not allowed to have flat 13, uh, 13 next to flat 13. But D over C is completely allowed on C major 7 and completely allowed on C7. So that would give me uh, the option to use it as a dominant and as a C7. But here's the trick. If I want to use D over C and convince you that you're hearing a major 7 chord, it's going to be difficult for you because you have a very incomplete chord. You have a 1, then no 3, no 5, no 7, just a 9, 11, and 13. What that does, it sounds very abstract. It's easier to hear this as a D7, right? So the remedy is to do one of the following. Either add something to uh, 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 substantiate the chord or uh, solidify its identity. So if I add a C, it makes it more of a stronger major seven. Now it's a D9 on top and a C on the bass. So it's, uh, you basically added a uh, healthy identity of C. If I play a C triad and a D on top, it'll be easy to hear. Right, it's a beautiful lush chord. 
So that approach would be uh, helping filling in the incomplete tree. So remember, just pick notes that your chord is lacking. For example, the seven, that's a D, that's a seven. I helped it again by adding the seven. And another approach is to use two triads, meaning use one triad to solidify the chord. The chord really needs a three and seven. So I can use E minor, that will give me three, five, seven of C and a second chord to color the chord. So I'll play like uh, E minor and D. Okay, so now basically I have one chord to color, one chord to solidify. That's a very viable approach as well. And let me just give you one more example working with that D triad. So if I'm playing a C7 chord, dominance really need the three and seven to sound cool. So I can simply uh, add them to the D. Uh, I'll give up my bass. I'll get this fat chord here, which is really beautiful. Or I can add the seven here and play it with a C on top. Okay, so the general idea is to uh, move that uh, major triad over a base of C, write down the collection of uh, harmonic functions you've got and see if they uh, work or not. So let me give you just quick conclusions that I did a long time ago. So for example, if I have a C minor seven, I really remember quickly that I can play a B flat triad over my C. I remember that I can play a D minor triad over my C. I remember that for dominance, go-to places for me are using the F sharp over my C, using the G minor over my C, using A over C. So I have all these associations. Uh, that fit every chord type, major, uh, dominant, minor, seven and a half diminished. So once I have that, I remember relationships. So I know that every time I'm looking for a cool dominant chord, I'll try a uh, minor triad half a step above the root, for example. So it's just a way to remember the shortcuts. So let me uh, now replay Stella by Starlight and I'll explain each of the chords I'm doing here. So I'm going for this. Okay, so here are the chords I'm using. So for the D half diminished, I'm using G minor and then G flat augmented, that'll give me the nine. On the A7, I'm using F sharp, which is a cool uh, flat nine, flat 13 sound, and I'm adding the seven here to get the chord to be a little uh, fatter. And for my C minor seven, I'll use, uh, let's say B flat. And then just to make it more solidified, I'll use E flat. And for my F7, I'll use B major, resolving to C minor. So it's out. F minor, I'll use A flat. B flat, I'll keep that A flat, resolve it to G. And then on my E flat, I'll use B flat. And I'll keep my B flat and to the A flat seven. So what you're seeing is on top just simple triads. But when you hear them uh, within the context of the chords, they sound really cool, right? So here's a progression for you to figure out later. This beautiful thing probably learned from Pat Metheny uh, from Bright Side's Life. So anyway, I hope this helped you. Please feel free to uh, ask questions in the comments. I'd love to answer. And I hope this helped you guys. Be well and enjoy this music. Bye-bye.